So Quibi, as, you know, as you guys know, this is sort of a, a recent flop that's been in the news. A lot of big players were were heavy in it, and and there was heavy, heavy investment. What I want to do today is I, I want to do a, a short episode, and I want to just show you guys what trademarks Quibi had filed, and some were even registered actually. So let's just let's just do a deep dive on their portfolio um, because they didn't they weren't around very long. What, we, what you're going to notice is that. The portfolio is, is frankly pretty sparse, but I want to just show you guys how you guys can use the same technique to do some research and investigation on these companies. The first thing to do, I think, is to go to this, the company's website and just take a look at it. Just to get a quick sense of what they do. Um, you guys, if you guys are doing this for companies that you already know about, obviously, this may be kind of gratuitous. However, however, um, the one reason why I wanted to bring you guys to the site was because I wanted to show you guys one way that you can figure out how to how to identify trademarks by owner. So and we did this yesterday with Snap, but if you scroll to the very bottom, there's usually going to be uh, some legal some legal documents like terms of service. Uh, and a privacy policy. So if you click on either one, what you're going to see is, is you're going to see the actual entity that is owns and and owns the intellectual property, right? So in this case, it's going to be Quibi Holdings LLC. Now, granted, you probably could have done the same search with just Quibi, uh, and that probably would have brought you all the results that you were looking for, anyways. But but it's sometimes it's good to use the actual name because uh, there might be other Quibis out there, or for, for whatever reason, it, it's just. I find it you get more accurate results if you use their legal name, um, at least for the owner. So, all right, let's go back. First, just first things first, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to tsdr.uspto.gov. I'm already here. Um, if you guys are following along, you just you just do USPTO Google search, yeah. Or thank you, Victoria. Victoria's got it down there for us. tsdr.uspto.gov. So once you go here, what you want to do is you're going to click on search trademarks. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to do a free form search. Now, actually, you can also do a basic word mark search. And then in the field section, just select owner name and address. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put in Quibi Holdings. So and I'm going to go ahead and put it in quotes just so that we don't get any ors. Uh, we might get a lot more results if it doesn't or. So let's just do Quibi Holdings. And actually, let's look at live and dead. I think everything that we're going to see is probably going to be live anyways, just because uh, they're short life. So I'm just going to leave it as is right here. So we're looking here at their live trademarks. We see there's only seven. Okay. So again, not too surprising, right? They, they weren't around all that long. We don't expect to see a whole lot of marks, but but we, we can see those. We can see where their priorities went early on. And uh, and not surprisingly, um, their early priorities were on Q, their actual icon, and their and their name. So let's take a look. So the first, first one's here. So this is their icon, right? Now, if you toggle back to their website, um, as you can see, this icon here is exactly what you're seeing down below here. This is their icon. And if you were to go to the Apple App Store, you'd probably see the same identical icon. So that's protected there. We can take a look also to see what specimens they submitted. But as you guys can see, if we click on documents, so it's actually, uh, it was already registered, right? So they filed November 19, 2019, and it was registered August 11, 2020. So let's take a look at what specimen they submitted. So it looks like they submitted their specimen in June. And what we're going to see is, ah, okay, so their Apple store. Now, uh, remember, the re this is probably going to be class nine because we're looking at an Apple store preview. But they actually submitted a lot of a lot of content in their specimens, so 18 pages worth. So this is, looks like their website. Now let's let's go take a look and see what their actual goods and services they're covering. So again, class nine, no surprise. So downloadable software for audio and visual multimedia content. Uh, they're also doing broadcasting under class 38. Uh, again, because this is a streaming service, right? So streaming services like podcasts, um, if they have any live component, you can also do class 38. And then I'm guessing 41, yeah, which is entertainment. So ent entertainment and educational services are going to be under class 41. So again, no surprise here. We have class 9, uh, which covers a mo downloadable mobile application, which is what, what the App Store basically allows users to download the mobile application to their phone. So that would be class 9. And then the live streams, that's going to be under class 38. And then class 41 is going to cover all their desktop content, online uh, educational content services. So very cool. Uh, let's go back and check out what other marks they have. Again, they only have seven. So this is going to be a shorter episode today, but we can still learn quite a bit. So let's take a look. So let's take a look. So this is turnstile. This is under class nine. This is still pending, uh, not yet registered. Let's see if there's any interesting movement in here. Let's take a look. And it looks like, oh, so they got a notice of allowance already. And they submitted a specimen on May 28, actually. So this is probably in the process of getting allowed. Oh, here it is, turnstile right here. Okay. With our patented turnstile technology. Okay. So that's you and show your, shows your holding your phone, portrait or landscape with each view adjusting, keep the full screen as you flip. Oh, interesting. 
Let's go for it. Let's see. I'm just kind of curious. So let's do, we're going to do a quick patent search. Veering slightly off gear here. Um, but again, I, I still think it's kind of interesting. Um, let's just take a quick look. So I went to usp2.gov and uh, I'm going to do a quick search for patents. And we're going to do an advanced search. And I just want to see if we can find any Quibi holding patents. It, it might be possible that it's pending, which is why it was indicated as, as patented. But, oh, here it is. Media content presentation. So there you go. So here's the one Quibi Holdings patent. And uh, again, maybe we should do a, a whole episode on this because this is kind of kind of interesting. This is one asset. I mean, this is an actual asset. And it looks like also that they filed it on May 17 and issued on February 4. So they got this patent very fast. Now, the way they did this, I haven't actually read the 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 the, the, the file wrapper history, but I am gonna bet that they probably filed for expedited examination. So that's an option when you file patents. You can file for what's called a request. You can petition to make the application um, expedited. And so it's examined more quickly. It's examined out of turn. Now it's quite expensive to do this, but but the patent office guarantees final disposition within 12 months. So um, that is probably what they did here in order to get this patent so quickly. Now let's see if there's any images that show turnstile technology. Ah, see, so as you can see in figure three, it's showing a toggle from from a portrait to landscape. And so I think, I believe that that's what they're trying to show. Kind of cool. So we went from looking at a company's trademarks to investigating their specimens and then realized, oh wait, they have an interesting patent. Let's go check it out. So pretty cool. Again, we might we might come back and, and do a deep dive on this patent. Anyways, let me toggle back. Um, again, the way we got went down this rabbit hole was we, we were looking for the turnstile mark and the specimen that was submitted. And again, it was this one right here. They were referring, so it's our patented turnstile technology. So very cool. All right, so let's switch back and check out what other trademarks they have. Again, this is Q. Now notice this is, they're not claiming color as a feature of the mark in this one, right? Color is not claimed as a feature of the mark. Again, class 41. Oh, they also have class 42 because they're hosting and maintaining an online uh, community, it looks like. But it's also 41 for educational services and online entertainment. And then class 38, which is covering streaming, and then class nine, which is covering their downloadable app. And again, this is distinguished from the first one where they probably have color claimed as a feature of the mark. Yeah, see the color purple and white are claimed as a feature of the mark. Very interesting. Let's look at this one. So this looks like a composite. So this is a composite mark because it has design elements and also a word element. So again, full coverage, recommend this all the time. Do a word and design if you can. And if it's in your budget, it's worthwhile. Now remember, this. Filing fee is going to be pretty pricey though, because they have several classes. So they have nine, 38, 41, and 42. So cool. So let's go back. Let's see what other marks we can find. So now this, okay, this is the straight word mark. So this is going to be um, probably might be interpreted as like the broadest uh, trademark that they have because it's just the word Quibi. And again, they probably have very similar. Yeah. So 42, 41, 38, and nine. And again, this was filed back in 2018 under filing 1B. So just real quick, just a quick aside. So remember, remember, if before companies actually put their products out to the world and offer them for sale or their services, they can file what's called a Section 1B trademark application. Now, a 1B application means that they intend to use the mark in commerce, right? And so um, what this means, though, is, is that it's a really good indicator of when they first started planning out the business, right? So this, this particular application was filed on September 11 of 2018. So 9, 11, 18. And so it was filed under 1B, right? So that's when they first probably came up with the name, probably not not too too soon before. So very, very interesting. Um, and they went for it back then. And then obviously, let's just see when they submitted their statement of use. Yeah, statement of use was submitted April 8, 2020. But, they, but it was allowed. They got the allowance on June 25 of 2019. So that's when they got the stamp of approval saying, yeah, your mark's good. Interesting, there's some office actions too that went on. Sometimes it's interesting, sometimes you can learn things. Um, sometimes what's interesting is when you find office actions where they were rejected over other marks that were found to be initially similarly confusing because you can see what they had to do to get around it and what they argued. That does not look like that's the case in this particular situation, but it's still, it's still very interesting. Now, there was an earlier office action that also issued. Let's just take a quick look at that, see if there's any. Yeah, again, no, no, no conflicting marks. So again, not as interesting, but sometimes you find some interesting things. And it's fun to do that sometimes with their core word mark, just because um, it's so valuable, right? Especially with the brand development. Now we have these last two quick bites 
in quick bites, big stories. Now these are not registered, um, but let's see what stage they are in. So this one looks like, ah, okay, so this is suspended. So this usually means that there's another conflicting mark that is waiting final disposition before the trademark office will make a final decision. So that's, see, this is what we find here, prior, prior filed pending application. So there's this prior application here that was filed before the applicant. Now, if you're curious, you can always look it up they make it really, really simple. All you do is you go to tscr.uspto.gov and you input it here and then you can see, so Quick Bytes. Uh, it looks like Quick Bytes was, is owned by an individual. Very interesting, very interesting because, so these fun rabbit holes, you can go down. You can see, so there was an opposition. It's still pending, it looks like. Uh, it looks like it went it went through settlement negotiations. Interesting to see, oh, okay, and here you go. So that that's who opposed it. It looks like Morrison and Forest Store opposed it, which is the trademark council for, for Quibi. So if you guys wanna learn more about it, you can go and click on uh, the, find the proceedings, find the TTAP proceedings, and learn more about it. Let's go back and take out that last, very last mark that we were looking at. Quick, quick bites, big stories. Uh, let's see what happened with this one. Ah, uh, this one is also suspended. I'm guessing it was also suspended in similar fashion over that other prior mark. And if we can see the proceedings, uh, let's take a look at the suspension letter, see what that says. So this is probably... Ah, uh, okay. And subject to this opposition number. So very interesting. Yeah, very cool. So that is Quibi. Uh, I hope you guys found this really helpful. Um, again, not not too many marks, seven, seven total marks, two pending, five issued. And again, in this process, we also discovered they had an very interesting patent uh, that might maybe worthwhile doing another, a separate show just on that. Again, really cool. Check out the specimens, study up, see what your competitors are doing, get a better sense for their portfolios and how they're spending their resources and in protecting their intellectual property, because it's a good indicator also of where their company's headed and what brands they're they're really investing in. So for example, if you see a mark where they're where they're filing on the color, on the just the word on just the design, right? That's a lot of resources that's being spent. So it's worthwhile honing in on that and seeing, oh wait, so they're actually investing a lot of resources in this particular new brand name and this particular design. So I can usually really be good at indicator of, of where their future products might be going. And again, what's really cool about trademarks is that all filings are public immediately. So you know right away, right as soon as they file, uh, even if they file under an intent to use, you know, oh wait, there there's resources going in this particular direction on this particular name. So cool way to research your competitors or other companies that you just want to get ideas from in terms of how to go about protecting your own intellectual property. So hope you guys found this super helpful. This is episode number 88. Thanks for watching. This is episode